This presentation is about tire coupled road simulators, or what is typically referred to as a four poster. I'll discuss traditional servo hydraulic four posters and then introduce linear electric actuators and the MTS E post tire coupled road simulator. So, what is a tire coupled road simulator? It's a tool that allows engineers to excite a vehicle's suspension. It does this by applying vertical input through the tires. Analysis has shown that 90% of durability damage is the result of vertical input alone. Range of tire coupled simulators. They come in a wide range of sizes, from small ATV sized four posters up to heavy duty trucks. Sometimes they're not four posters at all, they're six or eight posters. Most people familiar with four posters associate them with durability testing, and they're heavily used in this area. Interestingly though, the first silver hydraulic four poster was built for Cadillac in 1965 and was used for buzz, squeak, and rattle testing. As far as test types, Four posters are good general purpose tools that can be used for many different types of tests. They can be tailored for heavy durability or set up to be quiet for buzz squeak and rattle evaluation. I want to touch on some of these different test types. Durability testing focuses on predicting service life and determining failure modes. A failure mode is how a failure presents itself, that is, was the failure due to a bending force or torsional load, for example. These systems use aggressive profiles and require system with high fidelity. End of line production quality testing. Manufacturers want to be able to assess the quality of the vehicles coming off the assembly line. One of the measures of quality and one of the leading reasons for new car service is noise in the car. This system subjects the car to input profiles designed to find noises. Once noises are found, engineers can go back and find the root cause of the noise and correct it on the production line. Ride comfort is about assessing transmissibility. How are vibrations transmitted through the vehicle? Sometimes engineers are interested in how transmissibility changes as a car ages. So an objective measurement is done in a lab with a new car. That car is then aged using a four poster to simulate a lifetime. Then the transmissibility is again measured and the results compared. It is useful to have a four poster that can do not only the objective measurements, but that can also be used for the durability portion that is required to simulate aging. Noise, vibration, and harshness is similar to buzz, squeak, and rattle testing, except that it always occurs in a laboratory, and it involves additional instrumentation, such as microphones. Both are concerned about noise, but NBH focuses on the root cause of the noises, not from a production standpoint, but from a design standpoint. I talked about buzz, squeak, and rattle at the end of a production line for production quality. This test, however, takes place in a laboratory, often in an environmental chamber. And the goal is more focused on engineering and design. How do noises in the car change with the environment? Up here in Minnesota, cars develop squeaks when the temperatures get really cold. So how do servo hydraulic four posters work? Servo hydraulic systems are powered by hydraulic pumps. These pumps are variable volume, constant pressure pumps that typically run at pressures of between 3,000 and 4,000 PSI. Heat is generated in the process and must be removed via cooling water. This heat is wasted energy. The pressurized oil is then distributed to the actuators. However, the full pump pressure does not reach the actuators. Losses occur in the distribution system, long pipes or hoses, Many bends and other equipment reduce the pressure that finally gets to the actuator. MTS designs for a maximum of a 300 PSI pressure drop. On the working side, the pressurized oil is used at the servo valve and in the actuator to do work. The servo valve is just that, a valve that controls the flow of oil. 
Since oil flow is directly related to velocity on a servo hydraulic system, the control current coming from the controller is related to velocity. You'll see later why I point this out now. Tire coupled road simulators have many limitations. And by limitations, I mean nonlinearities and errors in the test method. These nonlinearities and errors can be broken down into two sources, tire errors and system errors. Let's talk about tire nonlinearities and errors first. The tire response is highly nonlinear. First, the road has bumps, and in the real world, the tire envelopes the road to some degree. On the four-poster, the wheel pan is flat. Then there are errors because the tire is not rotating as it is on the road. Then there are errors because the output is time-shifted and may have a higher or lower amplitude. And of course, tire response changes with temperature and pressure. Test system nonlinearities and errors. So while a stationary tire in a lab has its own nonlinearities, so too does the servo hydraulic test system. Several factors contribute to the response of the servo hydraulic system. We discussed the distribution sum and the potential losses there. But servo hydraulic as a power source has its own limitations. Oil compressibility limits the response and testing at higher frequencies because more of the total force capacity is being used simply to compress the oil before it can do any work. So how do test engineers deal with all these errors and nonlinearities? The answer is they use MTS's remote parameter control. By using RPC, most of the errors and nonlinearities can be compensated for. Remember, the goal is to replicate vertical spindle motion. The software works by adjusting the command iteratively until the spindle motion during playout matches the spindle motion recorded on the proving ground. If the spindle motion closely matches, the test is deemed successful. Here is an example of a four-poster layout. The control room overlooks the system. The four-poster sits on an engineered reaction mass. This reaction mass isolates the building foundation from any vibrations that are generated on the four-poster system. A reaction mass is the most overlooked part of a four-poster project. From a configuration standpoint, we'll start at the bottom left with the pump. The water chiller above it is needed to remove excess heat. On the top right is the MTS flex test controller. The system can be run from the controller PC or with MTS first road software, it can be run from a handheld tablet pictured on the upper left. Now I want to introduce linear electric actuation. A linear electric motor is basically the same as a rotary electric motor, just unrolled. Permanent magnets are bonded to a structure creating an armature. That armature is placed between coils of wire. The magnetic field in the coils is controlled by electric current. An electrical drive uses pulse width modulated current to control the magnetic fields in the coils. The magnetic fields of the coils interact with the magnetic fields of the permanent magnets to create force. If the current is carefully controlled, a constant motion can be achieved. Today's drives can be very accurately controlled in displacement. So that's how they work. Let's talk about what they can do. Remember when I pointed out that on servo hydraulic systems, the system command is a valve current and it's directly related to flow and velocity. Well, linear electric actuators are different. There, the system command current is direct, directly related to force. With the accuracy of today's drives, high resolution encoders are used for displacement feedback. As of 2018, MTS uses encoders with a resolution of five nanometers. Linear electric motors come in two basic designs. This one is the traditional design. On this, 
Magnets, which are referred to here as the secondary, are bonded to some type of structure. That structure is mounted on bearings so that it can move. The primary is made up of coils of wire which control motion. So a traditional linear electric actuator has moving magnets. We call this an iron core design. The moving coil or iron less design reverses this arrangement. Where you had moving magnets with the traditional design, here you have moving coils and fixed magnets. This buys you lower moving mass, lower inertia, and better response. Ironless motors have many advantages over traditional designs. There's no force ripple or cogging, which is a characteristic of a traditional design. The lighter weight and lower inductance make for a faster response and higher frequency operation. Here's a cutaway view of an ironless design. On the right, you can see the ironless motor forcers sticking out like wings. These are encased in a magnetic track as shown in the bottom right. The forcers are connected to a lightweight shaft. Air bearings center the shaft, making for a very lightweight moving portion. Also note the static support cylinders. Since electric motors are force generators, they use energy and heat up when generating force. For that reason, pneumatic support cylinders are provided to hold up the average weight of the vehicle. That way, the electric actuators only use power when they move. So, ironless linear electric motors, quiet, highly responsive, excellent for buzz, squeak, and rattle, not ideal for durability. The reason ironless motors are not ideal for durability is that they must be cooled with air. Electric motors heat up when they are moving. That heat must be removed or it can damage the magnets. A durability test is made up of aggressive road profiles. So the actuators heat up more. Air does not remove enough heat to cool these motors adequately. But an iron core design uses water to cool the electric motors. And water is 4.23 times as effective at removing heat as air is. So let's talk about iron core electric motors and specifically the new MTS iron core e-post. The iron core e-post has many advantages over ironless motors. The way the windings are incorporated provides higher force density higher than ironless motors. And it can be cooled with water, which is more effective at removing heat. Note that the MTS e-post uses four static support cylinders. That provides more volume and a more constant static force during playout. So let's talk about heat. As the coils heat up, so do the magnets. This graph shows temperature with respect to time. The magenta line is the uncooled motor. The blue line shows the temperature when it cooled. Durability requires high power density and thus more cooling. The iron less e-post is air cooled and since air is not as efficient at removing heat, overheating can be a problem. One of the major reasons for purchasing an electrically actuated system is the power savings which can be substantial. A servo hydraulic system uses a lot of electric power when running. Calculations with real data point to costs of about $90,000 a year to run a servo hydraulic four poster. Compare this to the cost of running an e-post at about $7,000 a year, and you can see how the savings pile up after several years. In fact, enough can be saved in a few years to purchase an entire new e-post. So to compare ironless and iron core. Ironless or air core is quiet and has excellent response. The iron core is also quiet, but has higher power density and can be used for durability testing. Ironless has air bearings and can handle light side loading, whereas the MTS e-post has roller element bearings and can handle more side load, which is important in four poster testing. The ironless is cooled with air and the MTS e-post is cooled with water. 
Here's the typical layout of the MTS ePost. The ePost actuators are under the vehicle, shown here with wheelbase positioners. This would be a drive-on configuration. On the top right, the MTS flex test controller provides program commands to the electric drive. The electric drive provides the control current to the ePost and does loop closure. On the top left, you see the IR control. This is available in a handheld tablet as well in the MTS First Road servo hydraulic four post. So let's summarize the differences between servo hydraulic and servo electric. There are significant differences between servo hydraulic and servo electric solutions. Servo hydraulic systems cost less initially but are significantly more expensive to operate. Servo electric systems have higher response and a higher frequency operation. While servo hydraulic systems have the highest power density, iron core EPOS type systems provide enough power density for durability testing at a fraction of the operating cost. So in summary, while servo hydraulic systems have dominated tire coupled testing for decades, we see a shift to electric actuation. Systems such as the MTS EPOST have begun to appear in many labs around the world. The improved performance and lower operating cost make electrically actuated four posters attractive to automobile designers and manufacturers. Expect to see more linear electric actuators in test systems in the future.